It's important to realize that stoves were not a common household item before the 20th century. My Irish great-grandmother never owned a stove in her life, and she cooked everything in a bronze cauldron. While even wood-burning stoves are a relatively new and expensive invention, this kind of bronze cauldron is found in archaeology all over Europe, spanning back thousands of years. Back then, people didn't have, or have ovens in their house, and so they would actually take their joint of beef with them on the way to church and stop off at the baker's. The Yorkshire puddings were actually invented, I think, created uh, as a way of actually filling up the family so that they didn't have too much beef. Beef was very expensive. She often made fried chicken in organic lard from their own pigs, and she would use the bones, skin, beaks, and feet for soup. Making soup also preserves the taurine, and a typical diet in the 19th century has been approximated to have as much as 20 grams of glycine and up to 6 grams of taurine. My great-grandmother was a big fan of homemade chicken soup and claimed it was very healthy, and since she lived to be 102 years old, she was probably on to something. In my last video I talked about taurine, but taurine and glycine go hand in hand. Both of them are lacking in the diet, and people who eat meat often assume they are getting enough, or perhaps if they eat a little liver, they think they get all the nutrients they need. Unfortunately, this couldn't be more wrong. While taurine is largely found in the small muscles like the tail and cheek, as well as the heart, glycine is found almost exclusively in the skin, bones, and gut which are the areas of the body full of collagen, and also the areas most neglected by the modern diet. Many times, people have asked me if they can take collagen supplements instead of glycine. The answer is you theoretically could, but glycine is only one part of collagen, and it's the most important part, by the way. This is the part that's the rate limiter when it comes to creating collagen in the body. If you want to produce collagen, it's actually much more effective to take glycine than it is to take collagen itself, about three to four times as effective. And collagen is just one of the many uses your body has for glycine, and far from the most important one. It's also a lot cheaper, as a good quality collagen supplement is very expensive. Glycine powder is also very sweet and easy to get down, unlike collagen powder, which is a big hassle. You can even use it as a healthy sweetener in baked goods. People sometimes even ask if they can use gelatin instead of collagen or glycine. The only time it's safe to eat is if it comes from grass-fed cattle, and most of the time it comes from pork raised on GMO soybeans that are full of glyphosate. The manufacturers claim that glyphosate cannot make it into the flesh of animals that ingest it. Lie, lie, lie. Yet in Germany, where it is banned, they found that 99.6% of people have it in their system when they tested. The only possible way it's getting through is through consuming animal products that have been fed on American feed contaminated with glyphosate, which is not banned in Germany. For cattle, it is less of an issue because they mainly eat the stock of the corn, since eating grain can kill them. For pigs, they can eat literally anything, just like a human, and the grain or bean is where the glyphosate mainly concentrates. Now, if you have a pig raised on organic food, this is probably fine. That's just what my ancestors used to eat not that long ago. But the state of things today is that even in countries that ban glyphosate, they often gladly buy thousands of tons of feed every year that's just full of it, or else they import the pork from places like China who are doing who knows what to it. Another thing that comes up when I mention taurine is people will say they get plenty because they eat meat, or you'll get plenty if you eat some organ meat, or you'll get plenty if you eat some raw meat. That's not really true either, because the places that have taurine don't have glycine and vice versa. That also assumes people are eating large amounts of beef liver or shellfish or beef hearts, which is not very common at all. 
and it's probably not a good idea to eat large amounts of shellfish due to pollution. While taurine is mostly in the dark meat and small mussels, glycine is in the collagen. This means within the skin and bones, including the gut, and that means that most people today are missing out on the amazing benefits that glycine can bring for anti-aging and for health. Right behind those doors is the salvage of a lifetime. Everything. What? Report. Everything behind that door. Everything. Sensor detects everything you could possibly want. For example, most people think their bones are made of calcium, but in reality they are made mostly of collagen. Most of the advice given for making your bones stronger is total nonsense. One thing that will make them stronger is glycine, because nothing can increase your production of collagen more than glycine can. Not even taking collagen itself. That's because it is the limiting factor in collagen production, and when you ingest collagen it must be broken down into its constituent components before it can be absorbed, and the other ones are simply much more common in the body. That's why bone broth is so healthy, because bones are full of collagen. Well, in the very recent past, we would eat the skin and boil the bones of animals in the pot for hours to get all the glycine out. Today, the bones and skins are either thrown out or used for other purposes like leather or pet food. Don't forget the intestines are also full of collagen and were fully utilized as well. In fact, some people still eat them. They call them chitlins or mountain spaghetti. And it's very good for you, and it probably tastes pretty good. It's probably similar to pork rinds, but it does sound kind of gross to today's culture. Even in Neanderthal times, it's been shown food was boiled in this manner. And before that, we would have just chewed on the raw bones, much like dogs do today. And along those lines, it's important to realize dog lifespan has gone dramatically down as well. Golden Retrievers have lost more than 10 years to their lifespan, I can tell you it's got to be the food, especially today when it's all made in China or the ingredients come from China or were processed in China. We just don't have any idea what's going on in there. On top of that, there's also the glyphosate issue. Unless the animal you eat ate only organic feed its whole life, a lot of the glycine boiled out will be glyphosate, which is linked to cancer and many other problems. The problem here is that glycine is very similar to glyphosate in its structure, and glycine is used not only to create collagen, but also some of the most vital molecules in the body like glutathione, ceruloplasmin, and creatine. While collagen created with glyphosate instead of glycine should not cause issues, any change to glutathione, ceruloplasmin, or creatine would impair their function and it might even turn them into a harmful agent within the body. Creatine is generally associated with exercise, but it is also vitally important for the brain and kidneys in particular. It is best thought of as a secondary energy generation system more than anything else, and the parts of the body with lots of mitochondria also need plenty of creatine to work properly. Ceruloplasmin is the least well known of these molecules, but in some ways it's the most important one. It doesn't have an exciting job, but if the job isn't done, then it's going to wreak havoc throughout your entire body and cause damage on a cellular level. Ceruloplasmin is needed for transferring iron in and out of cells, and if too much builds up in a cell it will cause massive oxidation, mutations, and death. It's also important in cancer because cancer cells hoard iron, which is needed for fast creation of genetic material for replication. Ceruloplasmin takes it out of these cells and slows their growth, but if it's not working properly, this isn't going to happen. On top of that, it increases the activity of superoxide dismutase, another vitally important molecule in the body. Of all the places in the body for things to go wrong, ceruloplasmin is definitely one of the worst. Glutathione is the master antioxidant of the body, and your body requires glycine in great quantities to make enough of it. Most people today get insignificant amounts of glycine in the diet, and it's estimated we would have gotten as much as 20 grams per day in the early 20th century. Supplementing glycine has been shown to dramatically increase glutathione levels, yet most sources, including the government, will tell us the paltry amounts of antioxidants within sugary fruits and a little fiber 
are all that we're missing in the modern diet. I don't care what you say, I can taste the newspaper. Posh. Shredded newspapers add much needed roughage and essential inks. Glutathione is very important for metabolic health and also for proper functionality of every organ in the body. It's also very important for mitochondrial health. That is part of the reason supplementing large amounts of glycine has been shown to turn the mitochondria harvested from a 98 year old man into fully functional mitochondria again. But keep in mind some of these studies involve the equivalent of supplementing an extra 20 grams of glycine a day. However, if these molecules were made with glyphosate, they won't work properly or likely even at all. That is no doubt why glyphosate is associated with cancer and has been proven in the lab to damage DNA. While it is hard to totally eliminate glyphosate from the diet, even with governmental bans because it's so ubiquitous, thankfully supplementation with glycine can outcompete the glyphosate and make it more likely to harmlessly pass out of the body when you do ingest it. Unfortunately, the more dietary glycine you ingest, the more you have to deal with the glyphosate issue. Many people think they can get enough from the diet alone, but they underestimate the huge amount of glycine that our diet is missing and don't realize that glyphosate is a huge issue that looms large within our dietary horizons. So while it's generally better to get nutrients from the diet, in this case synthetic supplements are probably the safest option. It's made synthetically from glucose, so there's not much that can go wrong. Some amino acids are made biosynthetically, like tryptophan, and those are probably best avoided. Keep in mind too that food animals have genetically changed quite a bit, especially chickens. A chicken today looks like a miniature bodybuilder, but an ancestral chicken is mostly skin and bones. So pound for pound there's simply less collagen in these modern chickens. Still, if you get a whole organic chicken and make soup using the whole thing, including the feet and head, that would be a great source of both glycine and taurine. However, to get these ancestral levels, you will have to do this on a daily basis for several meals a day. The same applies to fish. Eels were once the main dietary staple in much of Europe, and they were even dried out and used as currency. For many, this was how the rent was paid. Eels were sometimes used to pay rent. In the 11th century, some historians think that over half a million eels were paid in rent as opposed to money. In 1194, the monks of Ramsey Abbey rented the right to use a roadway, a raised roadway across some marshy land for the use of their abbey. And they negotiated an annual rent. And that annual rent was two pounds of spices and ginger, a pair, of red trousers and a thousand eels a year. Many think they can get enough taurine from fish, but if you didn't boil the fish head and skin and scales and guts, you're throwing out all the glycine. And if the fish is not wild caught, it's basically worthless nutritionally speaking. It will be contaminated with glyphosate and have zero EPA or DHA. You may as well just eat a filet of fish at the McDonald's down by the corner. There's also no guarantee it's actually wild caught or even the species claimed. I like red snapper, but it is seldom real red snapper anymore. And it usually tastes like trash, even at very expensive restaurants. I also like orange roughy, but it's full of mercury. Same for clams. These days I just skip seafood entirely, except for sardines, herring, and mackerel. These are full of fish oils and they're not farmed. Like taurine, glycine helps the body in so many ways it's overwhelming. I found at least 30 studies with unique ways it helps, and many duplicates on top of that. Combining glycine with NAC has been shown to lessen virtually all signs of aging. This combination is called Glynac and is being considered for use as a medical treatment. It helps with blood pressure, inflammation, the gut, and acts as an antibiotic towards pathogens while increasing the activity of probiotic bacteria. It protects both the liver and the kidneys, and I theorize it can also be converted to choline as well, though I could not find conclusive proof of this. Glycine is shown to help with ulcers, and can also be taken while fasted without breaking the fast. So this could be helpful for those who want to fast but have ulcers. 
Glycine stimulates growth hormone secretion, which could help to protect your muscles from catabolism during a fast and with regenerating the organs after the fast is over. Glycine supplementation is even shown to reduce plaque and heart disease. Glycine slows down skin aging and the other effects of glycation and helps fight insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. It's also shown to regenerate neuronal damage in type 2 diabetics. I feel reborn. I'm like a phoenix rising from Arizona. Glycine is an immunomodulator, meaning it will help prevent or moderate autoimmune issues, including the dreaded cytokine storm we hear so much about these days. At the same time, it does not reduce beneficial immune system activity, but actually increases it. Glycine is shown to help prevent or reverse many forms of cancer, and glutathione and ceruloplasmin are both vital in this regard. Glycine is important for mental health, and high-dose supplementation has been shown to reduce symptoms in schizophrenics, and it's by levels comparable to many antipsychotic medications. Thankfully, it does this without the absolutely awful side effects of these medications. Glycine is kidney protective and also reduces uric acid levels. Since it can be taken while fasting, this is an especially useful supplement for those who want to bring a gout attack under control quickly. Glycine also helps prevent cell damage from hypoxia and reperfusion after injury, which is why donor organs are stored in high concentrations of glycine for transport. It also bolsters the cell membrane and is cytoprotective from damage in general, meaning it helps protect cells from all manner of damage. While we are told to eat fruits and vegetables, we can't rely on even organic produce today. They only have relatively low amounts of antioxidants in the best case, which are difficult to absorb like vitamin C, and in modern depleted soil, they have fewer nutrients. Historically, farming would take place in a location for only five to seven years, and then new fields were cleared for further farming. Otherwise, crops became less and less productive and nutritious over time. This still happens in Africa and South America and is often called slash and burn farming. This is simply not a sustainable way to grow food, and that problem hasn't really been solved in modern times. Later on, crop rotation expanded the life of farmland, and ultimately the four-field system created a gigantic revolution in British food production which allowed for the population levels we see today. But it's important to realize that this system had animals as an integral part of it, and without that, you simply deplete the soil year to year, even with organic fertilizers, and things just get worse and worse. Sadly, this organic food production system was replaced by monoculture, which has only produced slightly more food, but it was much cheaper than the healthy alternative. This has led to largely nutritionless produce, even from most organic farms, because the soil just becomes more depleted every single year. Or still, even organic food today is often irradiated, with Costco being one of the chief offenders. This creates more reactive oxygen species within the food itself. So ironically, the fruit and veg you're eating for the antioxidants is actually causing you oxidative damage. There's also a toxic coating called apil, often used on produce today, that makes this healthy organic food even more toxic. What we really need in the diet today is whole animal foods. When we ate eels, we ate the whole thing, the skin, the head, all of it, and that way we got plenty of glycine and plenty of taurine. But now we simply don't get that anymore from the cuts of meat that we get, and we also don't get it from liver either, which is important to realize. Why are we deficient in glycine? Well, we all know that we have to eat whole grains in order to get the B vitamins we need. We discovered that 100 years ago. Whole grains, fine, but what about the whole pig, the whole chicken, and the whole fish, and the whole cow? Right, we cut off the muscle meats and we throw the bones away. But everybody knows grandma's chicken soup is so good for you. Why? Because you're boiling the collagen out of the bones. That's the protein and that's where most of the glycine is. Well, it turns out that glycine is also an amino acid that as the free amino acid is needed in high concentration all the time in your body to keep those cells that do the inflammation from being hyperactive. Our diet today is just not complete 
and most of the collagen we used to have in the diet is simply thrown out, and this means we get very little dietary glycine. We also don't eat much organ meat, so we're not getting all that much taurine either. We can address this by making soup from whole organic chickens and other collagenous foods, but it would take a concerted effort to reach the levels we would have gotten in the 19th century. Since glycine can outcompete glyphosate in the diet, and glyphosate is a ubiquitous toxin, supplementation is probably a very good idea. But then, who am I to tell you what to do? I thought, well, I, I started to think that maybe you were just like a madman with a box. Maybe, Pond, there's something you better understand about me because it's important. And one day, your life may depend on it. I am definitely a madman with a box. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. 